Hi, everybody. So let's list the U.S. presidents. And we start with George Washington. Leader of the American forces during the American Revolution, president of the Constitutional Convention and widely believed by his contemporaries to be the indispensable man. After he left office, after two terms, he was succeeded by his vice president, who was elected in his own right, and that was John Adams. pugnacious with um, also vain uh, but highly intelligent John Adams was worried that posterity meaning us would forget his important role during the American Revolution uh, but uh, we do not forget Mr. Adams Adams in turn lost his bid to re-election to his vice president, who was Thomas Jefferson. Primary author of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson was the voice of American liberty, but he also held many enslaved people and was able to pursue a life of public service because enslaved black people allowed him that life. Jefferson widely decried slavery, but um, did not actively work to free the slaves. He embodies, I think, the paradox of the United States, a land proclaiming liberty, but uh, also a land which was founded in large part on slave labor. Jefferson was succeeded in office after two terms by another Virginian, James Madison. who is referred to as the father of the Constitution. It was really his notes taken during the Constitutional Convention that are the best source for us uh, to know what happened in that closed proceeding. After two terms, Madison was succeeded by another Virginian, James Monroe. whose presidency uh, is often referred to as an era of good feelings, that is between 1816 and 1824. There was in fact quite a lot of tumult during that time regarding slavery and uh, economic recession in 1819, uh, the Missouri Compromise in 1820, but uh, at the time all of that uh, was still better than what came before, which was, for example, the War of 1812, uh, which uh, Madison presided over. Well, uh, the Virginia dynasty, so-called, uh, ended uh, with James Monroe leaving office after two terms and being succeeded by the Secretary of State, who was John Quincy Adams, son of John Adams, but also 
an ambassador, uh, a senator, a successful secretary of state, a brilliant man uh, who inherited some of the more unfavorable traits of his father in terms of personality. John Quincy Adams himself said, I am a cold and forbidding person, uh, which may have been true. Uh, John Quincy Adams, however, when he left office, he was defeated after one term. He was elected to the House of Representatives and served many terms there. So he joined Congress after being president and uh, he died on the floor of the House of Representatives um, struggling against struggling for the freedom to speak, namely to speak against slavery. Uh, he was protesting against the so-called gag rule which presented, excuse me, which prevented the introduction of petitions calling for slavery to be abolished. Um, John Quincy Adams felt that that was a violation of freedom of speech and of course he was right. So. John Quincy Adams, not a successful president, but I would say a successful American. Well, he was succeeded by his polar opposite in so many ways, and that was Andrew Jackson first president born in a log cabin, only president to have been a prisoner of war, uh, and as a 13-year-old boy fought in the American Revolution and was injured in that uh, when he was sliced across the face by a British sabre uh, when Jackson refused to polish the British officer's boots. Jackson these days is known more for compelling the Native Americans to um, relinquish their lands, uh, which he certainly did. Jackson was succeeded in office by a man who served as his vice president, and that was Martin Van Buren of New York, specifically of Old Kinderhook, New York, in uh, the election campaign of 1836. Uh, supporters of Van Buren belong to Old Kinderhook clubs, named after where Van Buren was from. Old Kinderhook clubs were often abbreviated as OK clubs. OK clubs. Uh, and shouters of Van Buren would shout, OK, OK, OK. And one theory of the origin of the f expression OK is from Old Kinderhook clubs. OK. There are other suggestions for where OK originated, but this one is my favorite. Van Buren uh, was succeeded in office by this man, who was a successful general, but most notably is um, that Harrison died after only a month as president. He gave an hour and a half long inaugural address in the cold, improperly dressed, and contracted pneumonia and died after one month. So the vice president assumed the office of president for the first time, and that was by
John Tyler, who, among other things, was, at the end of his life, elected to the Confederate Congress representing Virginia. He did not, however, take office because he died before it convened, but Tyler uh, went with his home state uh, in the Civil War. Tyler uh, was not very popular as president, and he was succeeded by this man, James K. Polk of Tennessee, who was a protege of Andrew Jackson, sometimes referred to as Young Hickory, whereas Andrew Jackson was Old Hickory. Uh, to Polk, we can attribute much of current United States landmass, including that which was conquered from the country of Mexico during the Mexican-American War, 1845 to 1848, which the United States initiated. It was absolutely a war of conquest. After Polk, we have Zachary Taylor, who died after a year and a half or so in office um, in a July 4th celebration in the heat of Washington, D.C. He drank cold milk and I believe it was ch cherries, but it could have been raspberries, some berry, uh, and they must have been infected with something. Um, and uh, he contracted an illness and died. 1850, and his vice president assumed the office of presidency, uh, of president, and that was one of the more interesting names in the American presidency, and that is this. Millard Fillmore, probably one of the most forgettable people ever to be president. His presidency was uh, not exactly uh, successful. It was very short as well. And uh, his inability to handle growing sectional strains certainly contributed to the Civil War. Fillmore left office and uh, certainly was not re-elected, but who was elected was this man, Franklin Pierce, whose uh, unwillingness or inability to stand up to the growing assertiveness of the South Pierce was blamed for contributing to the growth of Southern power and nationalism. Uh, Franklin Pierce was uh, not one of the more effective presidents and in fact holds the distinction of being the only incumbent president not to receive the nomination for re-election by his party. But the next president was also a Democrat, like Franklin Pierce, and that was this man. James Buchanan, the only president so far from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. If you see pictures of James Buchanan, you will notice that his head is always cocked to one side and that is because he had an eyesight defect so that he really only had one good eye and uh, he cocked his head in order to get things kind of in view so he could see better and that is reflected in the photographs that were taken of him. James Buchanan also, by the way, was the only 
president to be a bachelor during his entire term. Um, Grover Cleveland was a bachelor at first, but he married while in office. In any event, James Buchanan, uh, again by his inaction, I would say, contributed to the cause of the Civil War. And he was replaced by a much stronger figure, and that was Whoops. Abraham Lincoln, a name that probably will never disappear among the highlights of American history. Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin and did not receive formal education. He learned to read by reading Shakespeare and the Bible and those influences are reflected in Lincoln's own writing, namely the Emancipation Proclamation, as well as the Gettysburg Address, as well as his two inaugural addresses. Uh, Lincoln, of course, a man of peace in terms of his intentions, but he was sworn to uphold the Union, and so when the South succeeded, or seceded, uh, Lincoln felt he had no choice but to take up arms to prevent the Southern Rebellion. Lincoln's name was reviled in the South for many, many, many decades subsequently by Southerners. Lincoln, of course, was assassinated in April 1865 by John Wilkes Booth, a Southern sympathizer, and was replaced in office by his vice president, a Democrat, who was Andrew Johnson, who was eventually impeached as part of a power struggle between Congress and the president, and who also was illiterate by the time he married his wife, or at the time he married his wife, his wife actually taught him to read and write. Andrew Johnson was uh, succeeded in office by the victorious general in the North, Ulysses Grant, whose two terms in office were marred by many political scandals resulting from Grant's friends who were corrupt and dishonest. Uh, Grant was a poor judge of character, even though he was a successful general. Uh, Grant's presidency ended, and the election of 1876 was highly disputed, and uh, compromise resulted in the election of this man, Rutherford B. Hayes, whose election is not notable so much for what Hayes did, but is notable as being the uh, marking the end of Reconstruction after the Civil War. Hayes uh, served uh, only one term, and his successor was this man. James Garfield, no relation to the orange cartoon cat. Garfield was a brilliant man who could simultaneously write Greek with one hand and Latin with the other at the same time. Uh, he was also a Civil War general from Ohio, but he only served six months as president. He was assassinated by a man who suffered from mental illness, perhaps schizophrenia, uh, it's often said that he was a, quote, disgruntled office seeker. That's true, but it's really not the whole story. 
Garfield was replaced by his vice president, who was this man. Chester Arthur, who may indeed have been born in Canada. Um, his birthplace is disputed. It's listed normally as New York, but uh, it may indeed have been just across the border in Canada. These presidents during the Gilded Age are often forgotten, and that's because during this time, Congress exercised most of the power, not the presidents. Uh, after Chester Arthur, we have this man. Grover Cleveland. Um, Grover Cleveland was a man of enormous integrity. He was one of the few incorruptible office holders during a highly corrupt era. His last words were, I have always tried to do the right. Uh, he is not widely remembered these days, but his character uh, was one that uh, rivals uh, perhaps someone like George Washington or John Adams or John Quincy Adams in the sense of, of being a very honorable man who uh, was not in office to satisfy personal ambition, but uh, for public service. Even though Cleveland in the election of 1888 received more popular votes, he lost in the Electoral College. So the presidency uh, was uh, assumed by this man, Benjamin Harrison, who was the grandson of William Henry Harrison. I should point out that Grover Cleveland was a Democrat, and that was he was the first Democrat to serve since the Civil War, but Harrison uh, returned the presidency to Republicans. Grover Cleveland got married in the White House, and when the Harrisons moved into the White House after Cleveland's defeat, Mrs. Cleveland said to Mrs. Harrison, please keep the White House in good condition for when she returns in four years, meaning for when Mrs. Cleveland returns in four years. And sure enough, in the election of 1892, Grover Cleveland won and returned to the presidency. President Obama is the 44th president, but he's the 43rd person to hold the office, and that's because Cleveland is considered both the 22nd and the 24th president. After his second term, even though it was non-consecutive, he did not run again, and the next president was this man. Kinley, uh, who, among other things, uh, was president during the Spanish-American War of 1898, which inaugurated a century of American imperialism and overseas expansion. Uh, president McKinley, however, was also assassinated in 1901 by an anarchist um, and he was replaced by his vice president. Theodore Roosevelt, one of the most remarkable people ever to occupy the White House. In fact, it was during Roosevelt's term that the White House became known as the White House. Prior to that, it was the president's house or the president's mansion. But Roosevelt uh, put
put a fresh coat of paint on it uh, and it became known as the White House because it was gleaming white. Roosevelt was an historian, an author, a naturalist, an expert on birds, spoke multiple languages, uh, was uh, highly educated and very active. He was a cowboy, a rancher. Um, he also lost his mother and his wife on the same day, which was Valentine's Day, 1884. His wife died giving, giving birth to his eldest daughter, Alice, and on the same day, his mom died, and that was on Valentine's Day. He uh, did not recover for quite some time, which is completely understandable. Roosevelt chose not to run uh, for a second term in his own right, which he would later regret, but the presidency, uh, he recommended to voters his friend, William Howard Taft. Who was an enormous man, uh, well over 300 pounds, and who whose bathtub in the White House had to be custom made to fit his girth. And seven men could fit inside the bathtub. There are pictures of that. I encourage you to look. But he was also a very warm and friendly man and also very brilliant. Uh, he was, I believe he graduated second in his class at Yale Law School. And more importantly, William H. Taft, the only man to serve both as President of the United States and Chief Justice of the United States, that is, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So not only did he serve as President and take the oath of office, but he also administered the oath of office of President. Taft, however, lost his re-election bid uh, to this man, Woodrow Wilson, the only president to uh, hold a PhD, which was in political science from Johns Hopkins University. Wilson also the first president from the South since, uh, I would say, I guess it would be, have to be, yeah, since Zachary Taylor way back in 1848. So the first Southerner in 60 years, um, actually almost 70 years, uh, and only the second Democrat since the Civil War. Uh, Woodrow Wilson these days is controversial uh, because of his record of what amounted to institutional racism. Uh, he was a man of Southern prejudices and he was responsible for segregating the government workforce um, by race. That was not done until Wilson did it. He was also a reformer, an educational reformer, a reformed governor of New Jersey, president of Princeton. Uh, and like Thomas Jefferson, he was both enlightened in some of his views, but in other ways, uh, had very, very dark views. He also was president during U.S. involvement in World War I, which ultimately broke him, at least the peace did. And uh, the next president who promised a, quote, return to normalcy was this man. Warren G. Harding, who was a senator, but mainly he was a journalist, or, or not so much a journalist, but a, a newspaper man. He was um, uh, published a newspaper. And uh, he was a regular guy uh, who enjoyed 
cards with the guys and smoking cigars and uh, being unfaithful to his wife. Uh, I'm not in any way defending that. I'm just saying that was normal among a certain political class in the early 20th century. Uh, Harding, uh, again, although honest himself, had poor choices in friends, and his friends were corrupt and dishonest and embarrassed him uh, through their behavior. Uh, although uh, most of it was not uncovered until after Harding died, which took place only a couple years, or I should say about, yes, it was 1923. He was elected in 1920. So only after about two years in office, Harding died of natural causes. And uh, after he died, the scandals that occurred during his presidency was uh, were revealed. Uh, but that happened under the watch of his vice president, who was this man, Calvin Coolidge, uh, also known as Silent Cal because he was very taciturn. He did not speak a lot. My favorite story about Calvin Coolidge is at a dinner party, uh, a journalist said to the president, I bet my friend $10, I don't remember the amount, but I bet my friend $10 that I could get you to say more than two words tonight. And Coolidge looked at him and said, you lose. Coolidge uh, served one term in his own right, but decided not to run for re-election in 1928. Uh, in that election, the victor was this man. Herbert Hoover. Hoover was one of the most intelligent and successful men ever to occupy the presidency. He was a mining engineer, became a self-made millionaire, spoke Chinese. Uh, indeed, his wife spoke Chinese as well because of their missionary work in China. They spoke Chinese to each other uh, when they wanted some privacy. And Hoover, unfortunately, was in office when the crash of 1929 occurred. And although he had been in office less than a year, it was his responsibility to clean up the mess, which he failed to do properly, or at least failed to do according to his own principles of self-sufficiency. And uh, so he was blamed for the non-existent or ineffective response to the Depression. So when he ran for re-election in 1932, he lost pretty badly to this man. Franklin Roosevelt, who was a cousin to Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor, was the niece of Theodore Roosevelt, if you want to do a family tree on that. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt served four terms, breaking the two-term tradition started by George Washington. He was president not only during the Great Depression, but also uh, during World War II, except for the final few months. Roosevelt's New Deal policies helped the United States get over or at least recover from the Great Depression and his leadership during World War II contributed to uh, America's victory or its successes at least in that conflict. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt also uh, was confined to a wheelchair after the age of 38 because he contracted polio However, the fact that he was in a wheelchair was concealed uh, to the public. Uh, 
he used to lean on his son's uh, arm or body, uh, one person on each side sometimes, but oftentimes just uh, leaning on his son. And uh, he was able to actually walk by swinging his legs, which were in a steel brace. Uh, it's a remarkable story, but the point is, is that Roosevelt was one of the most effective and consequential presidents, not only because of being in office for 12 years, but also because of what he accomplished. Although it's also true that in his time, Roosevelt was also hated by many people, especially rich people who felt that he was a traitor to his class. In fact, there's a biography of Roosevelt uh, with that title, Traitor to His Class. Okay, so Roosevelt died in April 1945 and was succeeded by his vice president. Harry Truman, uh, a man of immense integrity and honesty and bluntness and boldness. Uh, Truman had a sign on the White House, excuse me, on his desk in the Oval Office that said the buck stopped here and that was emblematic of Truman's philosophy, which was uh, he is responsible, he is uh, he's in charge, and uh, he was the decision maker. One of those decisions was to use atomic weapons against Japan at the end of World War II. Obviously very controversial today, but it was less so then. Uh, Truman from Missouri uh, was uh, someone who believed strongly in standing up to people uh, if criticized or attacked. Uh, he was no shrinking violet, uh, but it was not due to self-interest, but it was due to public service. Harry Truman, I think, was uh, one of our last truly great presidents, in my opinion. Well, Truman uh, served president as much as he could constitutionally, and so uh, he was replaced by this man. Eisenhower, who was the commander of Allied forces in Europe in World War II and uh, ran for president in 1952 and won. Um, I think the most significant thing about Eisenhower is that during his eight years in office, there was peace. He ended the war in Korea. And even though there were high tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States that could have erupted into war at any time, uh, it did not. And even though Eisenhower was known at the time as being bland, as being clueless, uh, having a reputation for uh, speaking in circles, uh, it was later revealed by his biographer that uh, it was really all a ruse that Eisenhower in fact was highly organized, highly involved and that he put up this front of being basically clueless um, so that Americans did not have to worry about politics that is to say he recognized that Americans had gone through a world war and wanted to be a bit more carefree, and so he did a lot of things behind the scenes. In fact, the biography uh, that revealed this is called The Hidden Hand Presidency. Uh, and unfortunately, Eisenhower took a more passive role when it came to the emerging civil rights movement in the 1950s, uh, for which he's justly criticized. But 
uh, in terms of foreign policy, he was more successful. Well, okay, so Eisenhower uh, left after eight years and was succeeded by a much younger figure. John F. Kennedy, uh, who was the first president born in the 20th century and uh, confronted the Soviet Union with the Cuban Missile Crisis, failed badly with the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba, and was married to a very stylish, educated uh, woman, Jackie Kennedy, uh, Jackie um, Bouvier is her maiden name. Uh, as is uh, no mystery, Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, and so he was succeeded by his vice president, later elected in his own right, Lyndon Johnson, who simultaneously is known for attempting to establish the United States uh, with a, uh, as having a strong social safety net, but whose plans for that were ruined by his pursuit of the war in Vietnam. American involvement in Vietnam not only killed 58,000 Americans, wounded many more, and two million Vietnamese at least, but the war in Vietnam derailed the trend of the United States establishing a strong social support, which is found in countries in Western Europe, for example, like in Great Britain with the National Health Service, Scandinavian countries with their strong welfare state. We might have had that had Johnson not obstinately pursued uh, victory in Vietnam, which victory was never really defined, and that was part of the problem. Well, Johnson uh, chose not to run for re-election in 1968 because he knew he would probably lose. But who did win was this figure, Richard Nixon, who was elected on the promise of ending the war in Vietnam, but who then expanded it, and then uh, was nearly impeached because he engaged in criminal activity uh, in his effort to cover up the Watergate break-in. That is, some of his operatives working for him in his 1972 campaign broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in an attempt to bug it. It's a convoluted story, but the bottom line is that Richard Nixon attempted to uh, cover that up, at least cover up his connections to it. And the result was that Nixon resigned in August 1974, the first president to resign in disgrace. Uh, he, his reputation was somewhat redeemed by the end of his life, but uh, obviously it's, it's really tarnished forever. Well, his successor was this man, Gerald Ford who, when asking the country to be understandable of his position, taking over from Nixon in trying times, he said, I'm a Ford, not a Lincoln. Uh, Gerald Ford also holds the distinction of being the only person to hold the office of president who was never elected as either president or vice president. Richard Nixon's vice president was Spiro Agnew, but Spiro Agnew was forced to resign due to tax evasion charges. So under the 25th Amendment, Nixon appointed Gerald Ford to be vice president, 
and then Nixon resigned, so Ford became president. Uh, he was appointed to both offices and never elected. He was, however, a very popular member of the House of Representatives and a man of high integrity and good character who did his best, but uh, the responsibilities exceeded his capabilities, as I think he would agree. So he lost his re-election bid, and James Earl Carter, or Jimmy Carter, was elected on the simple promise that, quote, I will never lie to you. So that's how, bar, that's how low the bar was in the mid-70s. Carter was uh, a southern governor from Georgia. Uh, first southerner um, since Woodrow Wilson, I suppose. Or no, I guess Lyndon Johnson was from Texas, never mind. Uh, anyway, Carter presented himself as a humble peanut farmer, but he is in fact a brilliant man who uh, uh, graduated from the Naval Academy and uh, was a nuclear engineer on a nuclear submarine. Uh, probably one of the natively smartest presidents we've had, but unfortunately uh, the era exceeded even his capabilities so that he did not have a successful presidency. However, his post-presidency has been exemplary, uh, a model of ex-presidents. He has spent most of his time working with Habitat for Humanity, the charity which builds houses for disadvantaged people. Jimmy Carter is a good man, even if he was not a great president. So, after Carter, After Carter, we have uh, this man. Ronald Reagan, former governor of California, but most notably a former actor in Hollywood. He never had particularly big or outstanding roles, but he indeed began as an actor. Ronald Reagan was known as the Teflon president because nothing would stick to him, which is to say there would be minor scandals or uh, incidents which would be embarrassing, but somehow uh, he was never blamed for them. Uh, he presided over a, a rising tension in the Cold War in the 1980s, but also with the ascension of Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev uh, also presided over a rapid decreasing of tensions of the Cold War. Uh, and Reagan is given a lot of credit to that, but uh, really uh, it's most of the reason for the end of the Cold War, of course, is due to what was happening inside the Soviet Union. But uh, Reagan's forceful stand and rising defense expenditures certainly played a role. Anyway, uh, Reagan left after eight years and was succeeded by his vice president. George Herbert Walker Bush, son of a uh, senator from Connecticut, uh, uh, George H.W. Bush, the father of the most recent President Bush, uh, also a highly qualified individual uh, to be President of the United States, Congressman, Director of CIA, Vice President, uh, served in many, many roles and capacities. Uh, of course, he presided over the first Persian Gulf War. Uh, another notable thing about George H.W. was. He was the youngest pilot in the Navy uh, for a time, and he was shot down, and I should say that I mean during World War II. He was the youngest naval pilot in World War II for a time. He was shot down and rescued by submarine, which uh, was captured on video, remarkably enough. Uh, 
because George H.W. Bush is widely considered to be a, a good and decent man whose presidency looks a lot better in retrospect compared to his sons, in the opinion of some. Unfortunately, Bush was trounced in office by uh, his successor after one term, and that was this man, William Jefferson Clinton of Arkansas, elected in 1992, and uh, what can you say about Bill Clinton? I think the most notable thing at least to me, is that he was impeached as well. He was the second person impeached in office, along with Andrew Johnson. He was impeached in 1998. Uh, the main reason was uh, it was not necessarily because of his affair with the intern Monica Lewinsky, but it was because he uh, lied to a grand jury who was investigating a sexual harassment case against Bill Clinton. So I think it's important to know that Clinton was not impeached because he had an affair or even because he lied about the affair. He was impeached because he lied to a grand jury. He lied to a judge. Uh, Bill Clinton, uh, despite some successes in his presidency, it looks much different now, especially now that Hillary Clinton is running. I think Bill Clinton would like his wife to become president partially so he could redeem some of what he may consider to be the shortcomings of his his tenure. Of course, uh, even though Clinton was impeached, he was not convicted in the Senate and so therefore not removed. Impeachment, as you may know, is an accusation. It's like an indictment, but the trial in the Senate uh, lasted, I think, only two weeks and uh, he was acquitted. Uh, so he, uh, this is partly why he earned the name Slick Willie. Anyway, uh, Bill Clinton, of course, uh, succeeded by former governor of Texas, son of H.W. George Bush, who promised to be uh, uh, focusing on domestic policy, but the events of September 11th, 2001 changed the trajectory forever, uh, resulting in wars in Afghanistan and an optional war in Iraq. Um, the second Bush presidency is popularly considered to be a disaster due to the war in Iraq, which was now, we realize, based on false pretenses. I do not think it is the case that George W. Bush knowingly lied. I think it is the case, and it's been documented to be the case, that the people that surrounded Bush were motivated by ideology to invade Iraq and to displace Saddam Hussein for their own uh, purposes in terms of recreating the Middle East to their own view, which would secure Israel, presumably, and remake the Middle East into a bastion of freedom and democracy. That plan, however, uh, clearly has not worked out. Quite the opposite. Nevertheless, he won re-election in 2004 against John Kerry, who now serves as Secretary of State. Uh, and uh, that brings us to the current occupant, President Obama, the uh, son of a white Kansas woman and an African from Kenya, uh, both of whom apparently were brilliant people. Uh, he was primarily raised by his grandparents in Hawaii, traveled the world as a young boy and as a man, the first black editor of the Harvard Law Review, and someone who came to national prominence in 2004 at the Democratic Convention uh, 
with a speech that's widely known as the One America speech, where he said, we don't live in a black America or a white America, but the United States of America. Uh, his trajectory uh, quickly uh, ascended uh, so that he was talked about as a possible presidential candidate directly after that. And sure enough, four years later, he was elected amazingly um, and re-elected on top of that. His approval ratings at this time are the highest that they've been in uh, in his second term. And I think we can wonder whether that's because of the current political discourse in the campaign of 2016. So we do not know who comes after that. It will either be Republican nominee Donald Trump or Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. If it is Hillary Clinton, she will, of course, be the first woman to hold the office of president, which will be, I think, significant and important, even if uh, a person opposes her. If it is Donald Trump, uh, he will be someone who will hold the office without any political experience whatsoever which will also be a first, uh, or at least a first in a long time. Thinking back, I can't think of any person who has had less political experience than Donald Trump, I'm not suggesting that's a bad thing or a good thing, it just is. So that uh, completes our list of the presidents of the United States. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.